You ready? Yep. Thumb, index, middle finger, somewhere over here. Almost. Almost, okay, closer. <laughs> our sense of touch is important because it's how we interact with our environment. It keeps us safe, for example, by letting us know if something has pricked us or if it's at a temperature that might hurt us. Your sense of touch also provides important clues for navigating the world. So what if you lost it, either partially or completely? We're going to explore how brain-computer interfaces and other technologies are helping paralyzed and partially paralyzed patients not only restore their ability to move, but also their ability to feel the world around them. This is SenseMakers. Today, we're talking about touch. This feels kind of cold on the outside. Oh, <laughs> what is this? Is it ice cream? So how was my brain processing that information? Well, sensory cells in your skin send information to sensory neurons in the dorsal roots of the spinal cord. From there, that's relayed up to the brain. Your brain and spinal cord process these signals. And with another set of neurons called corticospinal neurons, it sends response signals to different parts of your body. This happens in fractions of a second, giving us immediate feedback or feeling. But what if for some reason those neurons are damaged and that relay system is either compromised or breaks down? A couple of years ago, Sharon Law DC was in a car accident. And it wasn't until two days after, then that's when I said, well, I can't move my thumb. So I'm getting out of this accident thinking, oh wow, I just, I lucked out big time. Little did I know what was really happening. What was happening was a peripheral nerve injury, compromising the ability of signals to go from her brain to her left hand and back. And it wasn't just her ability to move that was gone. The feeling was gone. It freaked me out. That tactile information helps your brain make tiny adjustments you might not even notice, but that are critical for handling everyday objects like a pen, cup, or... I, I sense I have flat edge, flat edge. And as I come up here, I'm, I'm sensing that it's, it's fitting on either properly or it's not lining up at all. Can you do it with your eyes closed these days? Uh, you know what, let's try it. See, now this is threaded wrong, I can tell. I have it on the crooked. It's not there yet. Hey, guys! Hey. <laughs> that was good. That was a first. That was absolutely... Yeah, you look really happy. I am, because you know, this is, <laughs> little things like this make my day. In the two years after her car accident, Sharon went to more than a dozen doctors who told her she'd never regain movement and feeling in her left hand. Now, I've asked my son to tie the shoes. I've asked these guys to tie the shoes. I've asked people in the stores to tie them. It's, it's a little yeah, demeaning. And now I'm to the point, it takes me a little longer, but I can double tie them. And that, that means independence. She found help at the Feinstein Institutes for Medical Research outside New York City. It's one of several organizations around the globe that are trying to help patients move and feel normally again. And the key to her success is this. Sharon is getting hooked up to a device that taps into her nervous system. It's what helped her feel again. What is that? So this is a, a patch of electrodes. So we're actually trying to stimulate and electrically modulate the spinal cord and the dorsal roots. Those are the roots that pick up sensory information. Chad Bouton is the vice president for advanced engineering, and he has been working on developing brain computer interfaces and other therapeutic technologies since 2005. We use a very intense but short pulse. It lasts less than a thousandth of a second. Uh, but we also repeat that about 50 times a second, and that starts to activate the circuits. The tiny electrical zaps that this machine sends into Sharon's spinal cord help awaken and reconnect some of the neural circuits that were damaged. That didn't happen overnight. It took Sharon coming into the lab for more than 30 sessions, each one lasting hours. But now her strength and sense of touch have improved so much, she can do things like catch a ball and drive. See, this feeling of being able to do this is yeah. like, it's incredible all without needing to get hooked up each week. And because the year-long treatment worked for her, Chad thinks that bodes well for people with similar injuries. There's hundreds of millions of folks that have had a peripheral injury, much more than the more severe cases of spinal cord and brain injury. And so yes, that opens up avenues to help a large number of folks. Others with more severe injuries, like a spinal cord tear, might not be so lucky. Often, these patients have completely lost their ability to move and feel. For them, brain implants will be key. These devices don't snap onto the back of the neck. Instead, they require surgery to place them directly on the brain. Before he started working with Sharon, 
Chad was part of a team that used a brain implant to help a quadriplegic man move his hand again. One comment that he made to me one day was that he was thankful for the movement that he was doing, but he couldn't feel any of the objects that he was interacting with. Traditionally, brain implants have targeted the motor cortex, which controls movement, not the neighboring sensory cortex, which processes information about touch. Chad is leading a clinical trial that recently started enrolling patients who will get five brain implants to target both their motor and sensory areas. The system is called NeuroTouch, and the chips, which are made by BlackRock Neurotech, look like this. Three will go into the sensory cortex. The aim is to restore both movement and the sense of touch. But that requires more than just these chips. It also hinges on complex algorithms that decode neural activity and then turn those signals into movement and sensation. Part of the NeuroTouch tech are pressure sensors that wrap around a patient's fingers. A computer translates that information into signals or electrical activity the brain can understand. And then we stimulate the sensory area of the brain. And that person who normally can't feel anything in their hand will now feel some sensation and tingling in that fingers. Why doesn't every paralyzed patient have a brain implant already? Uh, there's a cost factor. You know, these technologies are very expensive still at this stage. Another big hurdle is that researchers still don't fully understand how the brain encodes sensory information. We were just at the point where we're trying to understand the language, you know, just at a basic level. That means that even when they're able to elicit sensation, it may not feel entirely natural. The more brain activity neuroscientists are able to record, the better AI will get at understanding how the brain works. In other words, the future success of brain-computer interfaces will hinge on an intimate collaboration between us and machines. And in some ways, that can help us regain part of what makes us human, being able to connect with the world around us and with loved ones through touch. It's not just an issue of physical health. Our sense of touch is also really important for our mental health. That's what drew me to the senses to begin with, their ability to stir emotions and make our lives richer. So now that we know more about how technologists are trying to restore our sense of touch, tune in next time when we explore another one of our critical senses.